Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. If you're just joining us, what we do here is talk about tools and tone and tuning and hacks and myth busting and stuff like that. And today we're talking about something that affects a lot of us, which is what happens when you're smashing your snare drum and the lugs start backing out and your drum goes out of tune. There's some options and we're going to talk about those. This is a super common problem. It crosses styles, it crosses everything basically. And it doesn't even only apply to super heavy hitters. I mean, I'm not a super heavy hitter and I deal with this too, um, especially in lower tunings. And what it is, is you're playing your drum, you're hitting a lot of backbeats or maybe you're doing a lot of kind of loud fills or on the loud side. And you get to the end of the take or the end of the song and the drum's out of tune. And you know, the first thing we think is the whole drum is out of tune, but that's not always the case. And there are some ways to get around this that are gonna be super duper helpful. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Daddario for helping us out. We are using Firegrain Rebound Acorn 5As today because they're a little bit heavier and we're gonna be hitting really, really hard. So here's the deal. Um, this used to happen to me, especially when I was younger, when I was playing more super aggressive music. And it basically boils down to this. When you hit the drum and you catch the rim for a rim shot, you're compressing the rim down just a little bit microscopically. And if there is any kind of possibility of the lugs backing out, the rim is actually going to inch them out a little bit, just a tiny bit every time that you hit it. At really high tunings with a lot of tension, it's a little bit less of a problem. But if you use mid tuning or low tuning and you're hitting rim shots, this can actually happen really, really quickly, like inside of a single song to a degree that's gonna bother you sound wise. Now the way to figure out if this is an issue that you're experiencing and not just that your drum is going out of tune collectively is to check when this is happening to you and see if there are certain spots that are significantly looser or if you notice a pitch drop next to certain lugs. I experienced this basically right underneath where my right hand and my left hand land for rim shots. And that means that it's basically the two or three lugs that are closest to me where this is happening. But if only a couple lugs go out, the whole drum sounds like it's out of tune. And it can be really disorienting because it seems like there's something wrong with your drum when in reality, you're just hitting hard and it's a thing that happens, it's just physics. Now it's important to note that not every snare drum has the same amount of lugs. Um, 10 and eight are common, six is a little bit less common for a standard 14 inch drum. The more lugs you have, the more nodes of pressure you have on the head. And what that means is that each lug at a given tuning is gonna have a little bit less tension on it at a given tuning to hold it down the more lugs you have. So this is mostly a problem with 10 lug drums. It can be a problem with any drum, but uh, we experience it most with 10 lug drums. And this uh, can influence also some of your choices with which drum you're gonna use if you know you're gonna be hitting really hard that day. One thing that we've heard come up in conversation and in comments is people saying that this is only an issue if you're striking directly on top of one of the tuning lugs and that if you hit between, it's not gonna happen. Um, firstly, I don't wanna be thinking about aiming when I'm playing and I definitely, you know, I move around a little bit where I'm striking the drum, both just because I'm playing really hard or really fast or something and also for different sounds, you know, different rim shot locations and things, they do different stuff. Um, secondly, it's just not the case. If, if you've experienced this, I'm just saying that I've definitely never experienced this and pressure is pressure, especially on a 10 lug drum, we're talking about like three or four inches between the lugs. So hitting in between is just gonna back out two lugs a little slower versus one lug quicker. Um, the process is the same. And if it's happening to you, shifting two inches to one side or the other isn't gonna make it not happen. Now I tuned this drum not super high. It's in a range that I would use for a lot of stuff. And after a lot of rim shots, I can hear a pitch change, mostly under whichever lug is receiving those rim shots and the ones right next to it. Now I have three lugs on this drum closest to me. And so all three of these are being affected. It's not just these two. And if you go around the drum, it all sounds a little bit messy, but these are definitely the culprits. And this is where the sort of 
it's not really a hack, but where a solution comes into play. And what the solution is, is a thing called lug locks. There are lots of different varieties of these, and we're just gonna talk about a couple of them, how to install them, what they'll do, and how many of them you need. Now, lug locks have been around for as long as I've been playing drums, and uh, they come in different iterations. Now, when I was first buying them, this is what they looked like. They were just a small piece of plastic with an offset hole in the center. And the idea behind this, um, which we've mentioned in maybe one or two videos before, but not in depth, is that once your drum is in tune, you press this over the top of the bolt that you tune. And this is meant to just hold it in place and keep it from sympathetically turning when you're hitting the drum really hard and it's resonating and kind of like wanting to back it out as the hoop is moving. If the bolt can't turn, then it really can't lower in pitch. It has to turn, it has to release tension. So if you can't turn it, it's not gonna get lower. Um, these are also wonderfully reusable. They are relatively inexpensive. And the best part is you don't need to do every lug on your drum. Now, this is a thing that I've seen a lot. Depending on who you talk to, some people will do the whole drum. Uh, you really, really don't need to. You don't need to buy that many. Um, I have teched for some of the <laughs> hardest hitting people that I've ever seen in my life. And I only put lug locks on the three closest ones on the snare drum and the two closest ones on the rack tom. And those were just there in case they were catching the rim, which they weren't intentionally doing, but you know, it happens. And I didn't put any on the floor tom because it's just not relative. This is a rim specific issue. Now, if you're a person that does a lot of riding or rhythmic patterns on the edge of your floor tom or on the edge of your rack toms, which actually I do a lot, uh, this could be an issue on those drums just from striking the rim alone. I haven't experienced a lot of backing out as far as that goes, but it could happen for sure. It depends on like how much your lugs have been greased or also the tuning range, of course, you know, so that, that could be a thing, but it still rounds out to be that where you're striking the rim is the place where you need the help with these things and you don't need 40 of them for your four piece kit. You just don't. There are many brands of things that do this same kind of job, the lug lock kind of job. Um, we have one more here that's from a company called Tunerfish, and it is basically the same idea. It goes over the lug. It's a little more aesthetically interesting, aesthetically pleasing, um, and also doesn't have sharp corners like the simple lug locks do. Um, these are super cool. They do the same job. Um, it's a simple job, so you know, choose your own adventure. As long as it doesn't spin freely on top of the bolt, it's gonna do the thing that it's supposed to do. Now, public service announcement. This has come up in conversations. Um, I couldn't believe it came up in conversations, but it did. Uh, some people say that the solution to this is to not lubricate your lug bolts, and if anything, to promote that they corrode to some degree or rust so that there is friction inside of the lug casing where the bolt is living so that it won't back out because of pure friction. Um, if you like stripping out your lugs, this is the solution for you because it's gonna happen. Um, at the very least, it's gonna ruin the bolts. If you have like an older Ludwig drum like this or something where the receptors inside of the lug are replaceable, you're gonna end up replacing those. If you have two lugs, uh, it's gonna be worse because those don't have inserts of any kind uh, as far as I know. So really, you gotta lubricate the bolts because this is just a mechanical issue. There's no magic going on here. This is if you want them to not come out and you also want them to last, they need to have some kind of lubrication going on. We use lithium grease. Um, there are other options. That's what we prefer here. Uh, just get lug locks. They're reusable. You don't need a lot of them. It's mostly a snare thing, but having anything on a drum corrode, especially for some kind of mechanical purpose, just seems totally upside down to me. And it's only gonna hurt your instrument, and especially if you have a nice drum or a drum that you have sentimental feelings about or that you've had for a long time. Uh, yeah, respect the instrument because it's only gonna help you if you keep it working at its best, and if you allow things or make things like that happen, uh, it's, it's just not gonna be good. Now, in terms of other mechanical solutions to this issue, there are bolts that you can buy, lug bolts, that have um, sort of like a, like a clicking thing in the washer on the top that allows it to sort of go by increments that's meant to keep them from backing out and also it's sort of like a tuning aid. All of these things are functional as long as they are external, they're not gonna damage your drum. We like these because they're simple, they're fairly inexpensive and when you're dealing with things that are actually attached to the drum in some kind of semi-permanent way or that's gonna be complicated to adjust, that just seems like more trouble than it's worth. Um, and these are also nice because you can move them between drums really, really quickly and just keep a few of them in your stick bag. 
things like that. Um, all of these things are options. Um, we promote the ones that don't damage your instruments, but whatever you're using, whatever works is totally okay as long as it's getting you the results that you're after. Now, the last variable involved in this is what hoops are you using? Um, these are triple flange uh, on the thin side. These are original to the Superphonic. Die cast, wood, whatever they are, this is an issue no matter what they are. Using die cast isn't gonna make this not happen. If anything, it might spread it out a little bit more because of how stiff the hoop is. Um, it'll be distributing that pressure a little bit wider. Um, I've experienced this very little with wood hoops. I think maybe because there's a little more friction of the metal against the wood or possibly that they're so flexible that they snap back faster. I really have no idea. But in the end, lug locks are the solution as far as I'm concerned. Um, and again, you know, we're always curious what people are doing, but that's definitely what we do here. Also, believe it or not, I've had this happen on the snare side, and where it usually happens is the screws right next to the snare wires. I have no idea why. Um, I've had gigs where I found one of the screws on the floor at the end of the night, like it, it shook it out that much. So that's also a place to put these if that's a thing you're experiencing. Um, it tends to be the same location. Well, I actually, I think about it. It tends to be the same location as the batter side where it's backing out. So it would be directly under my snare hand for the way that I hit. So there you go, top, bottom, but lug locks will stay on the bottom too. All right, that about wraps up the discussion on backing out lugs and lug locks. Um, thanks again to Promark by Dodero for being our presenting sponsor today. And let us know what you experience with these things. If this is a huge problem for you, if it's not a problem for you, um, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and hit that little button down there so you can get all of our notifications. Um, we always put up a video at 12.30 Eastern Time on Tuesdays, even if you don't get a notification. And uh, let us know what your solutions are for this because we've definitely heard some pretty broad ranging ones on the channel and also from friends locally here in terms of just how they deal with the solution right down to people just tuning their snare higher so that they wouldn't back out because there was more tension, you know, whatever works. Um, but yeah, let us know and we'll see you soon.